Hello everyone. Today we're going to walk through a short video showing the recently open sourced SAI implementation in P4. P4 is a programming language designed to represent packet forwarding planes in a protocol independent and abstract manner. This video assumes that the viewer is already somewhat familiar with the P4 language and concepts. So if that's not the case, you might want to first take a look at the resources and language specification, which are available at www.p4.org. SAI stands for Switch Abstraction Interface. It's an abstraction layer for controlling switching entities like ASICs, programmable network processors, or software switches in a consistent way. By making the application stack consistent, SAI allows hardware and system developers to produce higher speed, lower cost infrastructure while still maintaining the capability to implement vendor specific functionality and extensions. The SAI specification is available online at www.opencompute.org. The SAI and P4 code we're going to look at today is available on GitHub in the P4 language repository. To get started, we'll clone the P4 factory repo and install the software onto our development machine. This particular instance is just a plain vanilla Ubuntu virtual machine, but any flavor of Linux should work just fine. The P4 repository is pretty small, so it takes just a few seconds to clone it. Once we have the code, we see all the usual stuff, readme files, licensing information, and so on. The first thing we have to do is run the install script, which does all the legwork for making sure the build environment has all the tools needed to build and run the SAI software switch. Depending on how many of the packages and tools are already installed, the script can take a few minutes to run, so now might be a good time to go grab a cup of coffee. Of course, as we all know, there's nothing quite as exhilarating as watching someone else's code compile, so we'll fast forward to the package installation and the Thrift interface installation. Once the installation script is done, we can look at the SAI P4 code. From our P4 factory directory, change into the targets folder and then into SAI P4. Now, let's take a look at the SAI code base and P4 program itself, seeing how it's structured in relation to the SAI code. If we open the SAI code base on GitHub, we can see that the architecture has a set of primitives defined for each of the major blocks, such as ACLs, host interfaces, next hops, routers, and so on. If we take the SAI route header file as a specific example, we can see that this is where all of the functions needed to add and remove routing entries are defined. The SAI.P4 program is constructed very much in the same way. It's important to remember that in P4, there's no such thing as a pre-built API. All of the API calls get generated automatically when the program is compiled. We'll look at those generated APIs here in just a minute. Like all P4 programs, our SAI program is built out of tables and actions. The tables in this program are set up to specifically correspond to the SAI primitives. These tables and their actions are used in the forwarding program to copy and populate fields in the various packet headers. If we do a regular expression grep for any line that begins with the word table, we can see a list of all of these tables. It's pretty easy to see how close they are to the SAI functions. You can do the same thing with other keywords to get a rough overview of how the program is structured. But for now, let's open the whole SAI P4 program. Here, I've stripped out the comments and some of the preprocessor commands to make the code a little easier to read. The program starts with a set of header definitions for all of the protocols that SAI knows about. We've got Ethernet, 802.1Q VLANs, IPv4, TCP, and UDP. We also have a special header type that's called ingress metadata. In a P4 program, this is the structure where all of the internal state for each packet is stored. Like other fields in the program, these are referenced and or modified by the P4 program to perform the features in the switch. Some of the fields such as port mode, port speed, port type are used to signal specific information about the target device itself, 
while other fields such as the next hop and the ECMP carry state about the internal forwarding database for that switch. Next, let's jump to the main control flow of our SAIP4 program. To get here, we just do a search on control space ingress, and then we can follow the tables that make up our forwarding program. Each of the apply statements invokes one of the match action tables, starting with the switch and port tables, then working through the routing block where the apply route and apply next hop tables are called. For each of these tables, we need a way to push state from the control plane or the SDN controller into the switch. For these APIs, we've open sourced a set of programs that allow the P4 compiler to generate SAI template code. The next step is to run our P4 compiler, which will take the SAI.P4 source program and compile it into an executable software switch, as well as generate the API calls used to push information into the tables. To build the switch, just change into the SAI target directory and run the make command. The first time you run make, the system will pull the required programs from GitHub and build them, which takes a couple of minutes. Once those are built, the software switch should take less than a minute to compile. Now that our software switch is finished compiling, let's look at a couple of things. The first item is the behavioral model executable file. This is the software switch itself. It's just a standard Linux executable that receives packets on a set of network interfaces and then forwards those packets as defined in the P4 program. Second, we've got a build directory where all of the automatically generated API code is created. If you look at the slash build slash include directory, we can see the SAI template header file. And in the behavioral model SAI source subdirectory, we can find the corresponding C source code files. If we go back and look at the header files that are published in the SAI repository, we can see that the automatically generated SAI headers from the P4 program are very similar in construction. This makes programming a P4 device with SAI calls very easy and allows the user to extend the functionality already provided by SAI by adding target or hardware specific P4 functionality. In addition to the SAI style header files, the compiler also generates the C source code that goes along with them, which can be modified by the user for debugging purposes or to add new capabilities.